Hello everyone and welcome to this Stay Safe While Working From Home webinar, also known as Things Not To Do When Working Remotely. My name is Neil Duplessis. I'm a Cloud Solutions and Security Architect at BUI. For those of you that's joining us for the first time, here's a fun overview of who we are and what we do. Starting from the top left, we are Microsoft's number one partner in the region with over 20 years of cloud and security experience. And we are thankful, but also proud of our achievements and awards that we continue to win every year, some of which you can see at the bottom right hand side. From a products and services point of view, we help our customers adopt a modern workplace, build cloud infrastructure and solutions, and to do so safely from a cybersecurity point of view. We also help them on an ongoing basis through a variety of managed services, including specialized services like adoption and change management and cybersecurity operations. But today we want to share with you some tips and tricks to help you stay safe while working from home. Firstly, don't use your home PC for work. Your organization has deployed much more sophisticated security measures to your work PC than you might have on your home PC. Organizations have for years put a lot of effort into securing the office or campus infrastructure, network, and internet perimeter. However, with a lot of us lately working predominantly from home, these layers of security have been stripped away. In fact, we have seen a significant increase in the number of cyber attacks that assume these layers of protection to be missing. Organizations now rely significantly more on other layers of defense as part of their defense in-depth strategies. The identity security, endpoint security, application security, and data security layers, in that order, are now almost solely responsible for providing cyber defense. Over the past year, we have helped many of our customers strengthen these layers of defense, for example, by implementing multi-factor authentication and conditional access provided by Azure Active Directory in the identity layer. Secondly, by deploying advanced artificially intelligence threat detection and response solutions with built-in vulnerability management provided by Defender for Endpoint. Thirdly, by adding attachment and URL sandboxing together with advanced anti-phishing and anti-email malware powered by Defender for Office. That is, of course, in the application layer. And lastly, building an effective last line of defense in the data layer using data leakage prevention, information protection, and cloud app security. Lastly, these layers of defense can be effectively combined through Azure Active Directory conditional access and also Microsoft 365 Defender XDR. An alternative approach is to completely virtualize desktops and apps using Wunja's virtual desktop. There's also a lot you can do to increase your own home network security. We recommend that you not connect IoT devices like home appliances or home automation systems to the same internal Wi-Fi network as your work or home computer. This is because many commercial IoT devices have quite poor cybersecurity and, of, and are often exploited in worldwide botnet-based cyber attacks. Separating these devices onto a network level from, uh, from home or computers is a good cybersecurity measure. Firstly, consider if there is really a need to connect the IoT device to the internet in the first place. If indeed this is necessary, connect them to a separate internet via a separate network, possibly using the guest network uh, if such a function is available on your, on your home uh, network. Human guests should similarly be provided internet connectivity via this guest network. From a security operations point of view, and as mentioned in the previous slide, 
implementing security controls on the endpoint becomes a priority. Also monitoring endpoints and software as a service systems for suspicious activities and other threats should be prioritized. Since we are speaking about things you can do to improve your own home network and infrastructure, it is critical not to leave the default settings on your home networking equipment unchanged. The default password to your home router is less than a Google search away, is well known and is always exploited by malicious individuals. In fact, here's a list of 10 things you can use as a best practice vulnerability checklist uh, for your own home network. One, the default username and password should be changed. Of course, choosing a strong password is critical, especially since multi-factor authentication is not an option here. Wireless encryption should be enabled and set to WPA2 standard. Many of the lesser wireless encryption standards have been shown to be vulnerable to penetration and should no longer be used. The wireless encryption passphrase should also be strong password. Um, a weak wireless password is easily breached and will allow an attacker to eavesdrop on all your communication or worse, launch a man in the middle attack, uh, maybe even from a parked car from across the street of your house. Number four, the guest network feature on your router should be enabled, but also be secured with WPA2 using a unique strong password. As mentioned before, IoT devices and human guests should only be allowed to use this guest network for internet access. Uh, work and home computers should be kept on a separate network to these. The so-called Wi-Fi protected setup or WPS is not as protected as it sounds and should be disabled. The same goes for universal plug and play. These features meant to make setup easier is also major vulnerabilities from a cybersecurity point of view and are often exploited by attackers. Admin access, port forwarding and ping responses should all be disabled from the WAN interface. Having any of these enabled allows attackers to probe your home network or environment for weaknesses from the internet. Lastly, the firewall feature should remain enabled. If this feature is found to be responsible for blocking some wanted communication path, an exception rule should be added rather than disabling the firewall altogether. Next up, don't leave your computer unlocked. For many of you, this would be an entrenched habit from before working from home, but we would suggest that this is just as important today. Shoulder surfing is less of an issue at home, depending on who you live with, but um, the cat might delete half your OneDrive. So continue the habit from before by locking your computer before leaving. You can also try to use dynamic lock, uh, where your computer will lock itself if it senses you and your device have left the room. As you can see on the, on the screenshot here, um, it works using Bluetooth technology. Also, it's a good idea to lock your computer when leaving the room because Teams will set your availability status to away when this happens, helping your colleagues understand your online availability. Lastly, almost all security measures are ineffective if your device is stolen in an unlocked state. So we would really like to hear from you. Um, we have a, an anonymous audience poll that will show up right beno beneath this video. Um, what we really like to know is if you use social networks like Facebook and WhatsApp, etc., for work. So we'd really like to just um, get your input on this and find out um, if this is uh, if this is actually happening uh, in your environment or if you yourself is using it. Um, it's of course anonymous, so um, so you can just answer there and giving us an idea of, of the prevalence of, of this sort of thing. Having said that, social engineering was one of the first forms of hacking and has never been more popular. In fact, the prevalence of social networks combined with the current work from home revolution has caused a significant increase in these kinds of attacks. Don't use social networks for work has similarly never been more important. The good news is that Teams Mobile, Yammer, 
and Viva connections are great ways to stay plugged into work while on the move. Installing Teams on your smartphone does not mean that you can never unplug from work. In fact, quite the opposite, using the do not disturb mode in Teams or the using the do not disturb mode on your phone itself allows you exactly this freedom. Whether you want to continue to use social network with a primary policy uh, or a privacy policy that seems to be a bit of a contradiction in terms, um, that is a personal choice. But being able to separate this choice from your remote work life is great. You've all seen this internet viral sensation, um, you know, live TV reports. Uh, and as, as you can see, uh, dad is playing it cool. Um, the little one is all confidence. And uh, when mom realizes she's in a complete panic, um, you never know when you'll go viral and become internet famous, but maybe for all the wrong reasons. But please don't let this discourage you from using your webcam in, in business communication. You can communicate far more effectively when combining voice and video than when using voice alone. You can also use the Teams meeting pre-join screen to prepare your device, your webcam, microphone, uh, your appearance before entering a meeting. Maybe you can enter a meeting just as confidently as the kid did in that video. So if we change gears a little bit, continuing on the topic of e-reputation, first impressions count online, just like in real life. Don't be a ghost or a robot, just be you. Be aware of your e-reputation, your profile picture, your style of writing short text messages, your use of emoji, GIF, and other emotion indicators significantly influences others' impression and interaction with you. Be thoughtful when configuring your online persona, as it carries more weight than you might think. Using your webcam and having the right lighting conditions in your work area will make you much more effective communicator than choosing to leave it off. Position your webcam so that looking at your primary screen will make it appear as if you're looking at your audience. If you're using a built-in webcam on your laptop, you may want to elevate your device to get the best looking angle. Of course, once the meeting has started, be aware of your own body language and read the same uh, of others in the meeting. You could also make use of the new live reaction feature in Teams, um, as you can see on the screenshot on the right there, to help the presenter read the audience. As mentioned above, emoji, GIF, memes and stickers are normal and encouraged part of short form text based communication today. We should use them effectively, but of course, we should balance their use with the context of the interaction uh, and the culture of the organization. Lastly, don't forget to be kind to yourself. Eight hours in back-to-back -back meetings is a good way to burn yourself out in just a few weeks. Work is work, even from home. So in create a workstation, don't work from bed, get up, get dressed uh, for work, make it count. Mind your posture, stretch, take breaks. Uh, the answers are not in the fridge though. <laughs> Be social, even online. Some specific technology tips is um, book focus time in your calendar. In fact, you might see Cortana suggest exactly this in a weekly email to you. You can configure Outlook to automatically shorten your meetings to allow you a few minutes in between back-to-back -back meetings, um, as you can see in the screenshot there. There's also a very cool Do Not Disturb feature in Windows, it's called Focus Assist, that will provide you some focus time when you need it, uninterrupted by notifications. Lastly, Use the Viva Insights virtual commute feature to end your day, close out your tasks, reflect on your day, and perhaps even spend a few minutes in a guided meditation session. 
And finally, we'd like to invite you to talk to us. If you want to discuss anything of what you've seen today in more detail, we're going to end the webinar now, but you are welcome to stay on. We'll answer any questions that you might have. Thanks so much for your time today and have a great day further.